Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're uh, about 22% of the way through and we're gonna do setting up Git this time. Uh, once again, I have a brand new machine so I haven't done very much setup here so this should all be just as new to me so, as if you were uh, not programming for very long. Git is a very popular version control system. You'll become very familiar with this piece of software throughout the Onion project, or the, 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 the Odin project. So don't worry too much about understanding it at this point. There are many lessons focused on Git later in the curriculum. GitHub is a service that allows you to upload your code using Git and to manage your code with a nice web interface. GitHub and Git are not the same thing or even the same company. Okay, so we're going to do installing Git. Now, if you don't have Mac OS, you're going to want to go with different instructions, um, but I do, so that's where we're going to go. So first one, we're going to use Homebrew. Homebrew is a package uh, management software, and that makes it so that you can install these kind of, it, it sort of gives you a, a, a pattern to organize your like uh, low level programming stuff. And so this is a really great system to use, especially for early programmers, but I wouldn't even want to try to do this on my own. And so first we'll need to install Homebrew. Uh, make sure that you've checked your requirements here. Um, so I guess I could check that. Once you meet the requirements, copy and paste the following into your terminal. So here's the requirements. Um, I'm just going to bet that I have that. It's, I've got a new computer. So, yeah, we're going to press Command Space Baller, open up the terminal. I'm going to build it up so it looks better for us. Uh, maybe not quite that big. And then I'll get this guy on this side, and we'll run this command. Okay, so because we're doing sudo, we have to put the uh, applicate or the um, my password for, for signing into the computer, and it'll appear invisible because I'm doing it under the thing. This script will install all of these things. Press return, enter to continue, or any other key to abort. So I'm pressing enter. Okay, cool. Now this is probably going to take a while, but I'm just going to leave the camera rolling so we've got an idea for how long it takes. Okay, cool. Didn't take as long as I thought. It says, on this Apple Silicon ch ch chip, you, you will have an extra step to take. If you look at the terminal output, after installing Homebrew, and you'll see installation successful. Installation successful. Further down in the terminal, there will be a section called Next Steps. Reading this terminal may seem a bit intimidating, but this is a great chance to overcome those feelings. Follow the next steps as stated in your terminal. Copy and paste commands given, and add Homebrew to your path, which allows you to use Brew command to prefix. Cool. So, next step. Run Brew help to get started. Okay, so brew help. Do we see anything else in here? Installation successful. It says downloading and installing. Into installation was enabled. Anonymous aggregate formula casks. No, no analytics data. Homebrew was entirely by unpaid volunteers. Run brew help to get started. And there's more documentation here. Cool, I did brew dash version and I got it. So on my Mac chip, it seems that whatever they said that they, this was something that you needed to do, this was not necessary for me. And about this Mac, this will give you an idea. I've got the 2021 MacBook 16 inch. All right. Update Git. Uh, Mac OS S already comes with a, a version of Git, but you should update the, to the latest version in the terminal. Type uh, brew install Git. So right now, if we go Git dash V, uh, I think you have to go dash dash version actually. That shows we've got that one. So right now we've got 2.321. So we'll go brew install Git. Cool. And now I'll go get version 2.32.1. And what did we have up here? Two point three two point one. Okay, so I didn't actually update my version of Git. Okay, this will install the latest version of Git. Easy, right? Perhaps. Uh, verify version. If you have just installed and or updated Git from the previous step, first close the terminal window. Open a new terminal window. Cool. So we're going to close that one and open a new one. Uh, 
and then ah look at that and now we can say get dash dash version 2.37.2 so yeah i guess we did update it a little bit it's less than 2.28 follow the instructions here okay we don't need to do this because we've um, got that version updated. So if you don't have that, you might want to do this one. But um, my guess is if you're start playing along with this, you probably, it worked out for you. Okay, cool. So that's step one. We installed Git onto the machine. And so now the step two is to configure Git and GitHub. Uh, for Git to work properly, we need to let it know who we are so that it can link a local Git user, me, to a GitHub. When working on a team, this allows people to see what you have committed and who committed each line of code. The commands below will configure Git. Be sure to enter your own information. Cool. And so where it says your name, you want to add uh, your, your actual name. Uh. This is an important time to not make a type, type error. User.name. So what's this? Git config. We're configuring, configuring our global Git environment to have a user object with a .name property to be uh, our name. And then here we'll do the email. Okay. Now that we've done that, we want to... GitHub re recently changed the default branch of their new repositories from master to main. Change the default branch of your Git using this command. Okay, so we're just copying and pasting this in there. To enable colorful output with Git, might as well, git config global color URI. So again, see, we're, we're, what we're doing is we're using git config dash dash global, and then we have these different things, user, init, color. So now, if I could do git status, I bet it's fatal, git repository. Okay, yeah, we don't have one yet. To verify that things are working properly, enter those commands and verify whether the output matched. Cool. So git config dot dot get. So instead of global and setting it, git config global, we're doing git config get. And we can say user. Okay, cool. Dot name. Cool. Nice. And so it's got my username and email. Mac OS user. Run these two commands to tell git to ignore dot ds store files, which are automatically created when your finder is, when you when you use Finder to look into a folder. .ds store files are invisible to the user and hold custom attributes or metadata, like thumbnails, for the folder. And if you don't configure GitHub to ignore them, pesky DS store files will show up in your commits. This happened to me everywhere. I didn't know that you could just do this. So cool, I'm just gonna run these commands. Do I know what they do, really? This, so what we're doing, echo, and we're adding it into, the into a file, which is like that. So we could go uh, cat, hmm dot git ignore global and so yeah all we really did was add that to this file which is way deep in the stack it's at the user level with a git ignore global and then here git config global core excludes file and then it looks like we added to that so i wonder if we could go cat uh, dot git ignore global Oh, we already did that. It looks like we... I'm not sure exactly what this one did. Hmm. It's adding to this config and then core. Um, yeah. So I guess we could go git config git core dot excludes. Hmm. No, just not. So yeah, I don't really understand exactly how that works. If you know, let me know in the comments, please. Create a GitHub account or sign in. Uh, go to GitHub and create your account if you don't already have one. Now, I, had, I already have one, and I think it's pretty straightforward. It's just like signing up for any account online. So if you already have an account, sign in. If you do not need to use the same email address as you used before. But it might be a good idea to use the same one to keep things simple. So we want to create an SSH key. An SSH key is a cryptographically secure identifier. It's like a really long password used to identify your machine. GitHub uses SSH keys to allow you to upload your repository without having to type your username and password in every time. First, we need to see if you have an ED25519 algorithm SSH key already installed. 
Type this into your terminal and check the output with the information below. No such file or directory. If the message appears in the console that says no such file or directory, then you do not yet have this SSH key and you will need to create one. If no such message has appeared in the console output, you can proceed to step 2.4. Now, since this one said I don't have that one, I'm going to keep pushing on. To create an S a new SSH key, run the following command inside your terminal. The dash C flag followed by your email address ensures GitHub knows who you are. Note the angle brackets in the code snippet below indicate that you should replace this part of the command with the appropriate information. So here it says your email and it's got, I'm going to actually put my email in there. And then they just give you an example. You would see the convention of using angle breaks. It's to, to indicate placeholders uh, throughout the Odin Project's curriculum and other coding websites. So it's good to be familiar with that. Enter file in which to save. When it prompts you to, for a location to save your generated key, just push enter. Next, if it asks you for a password, enter one if you wish, but it's not required. Nice. The identification has been saved in U user Robinson. The public key has been saved in this spot. The key fingerprint is this one. And here's the key random mart mar mar image. Step four, li link your SSH key with GitHub. Now you need to tell GitHub that your SSH key is so you can push your code without typing in the password every time. First, you'll navigate to GitHub and receive uh, our SSH key. Log into GitHub and click on the profile picture in the top right corner and then click settings at the drop down menu. Okay. I'm going to make this full screen now. Click here. Settings. Okay, next on the left hand side, click SSH and GPG key. Then click the green button at the top right corner that says new SSH key. Name your key something that is descriptive enough for you to remember where it came from. Leave the window open until the next steps. New SSH key. Uh. Now you can copy your public SSH key to do this. We're going to use a command called cat and to read the console. Note that .pub file extension is important in this case. Cool, so now we're taking that over the terminal. Highlight and copy that output which starts with SSH and ends with your email address. And so we go to the terminal to get that one. Command C. Now go back to GitHub in your browser window and paste your key you copied into the field. Then click add SSH key. Cool. And so it's doing double step, two step verification. So I need to go to, I have the two step verification set up. You probably don't if you're new to this. And so. That makes it a little easier. Uh, now it sounds like you've successfully added your SSH key. Step 2.5, testing your key. Follow the directions in this arc article from GitHub to verify your SSH com connection. Don't forget to omit the money sign when you, when you copy and paste the code. Hi, username, you've successfully authenticated, but GitHub does not provide shell access. Don't let GitHub's lack of providing shell access trouble you. If you see this message, you successfully added your SSH key and can move on. If the output doesn't correctly match up, then try going through these steps again or come to the Discord chat for help. Okay, so here we are again. We want to open the terminal. Okay. 
uh, and enter the following. Money thing not found. It's weird that they told you that you should enter that. I never heard of that. You successfully authenticated, but GitHub does not provide shell access. You may see warnings like this. Verify that your fingerprints you see matched on the public key preprint. If it does, then type yes. Okay. Verify that the resulting message contains your username. If you received a permission denied, then that didn't work. Luckily, we've got this. You've been successfully authenticated. So I hope everybody had the same uh, good fortune as I did on this one. I wonder if when we refresh this turns green. Not yet. Okay, step three. Let us know how it went. You've completed basic installation section. Good job. As, your progr as you progress through the path, there will be other tools to install. So keep your eyes out. You probably felt like you were way in over your head and you probably didn't understand much of what you were doing. That's 100% normal. Hang in there. You can do this. We've got your back. Additional resources. Okay, cool. So these additional resources are both uh, really interesting videos that kind of explain how that works and why I can publish the, is the public SSH key to the internet. Uh, this one looks like it's a bit more dense, but it's just an article. And then this is a video. So I'm not going to go over those right now, but I do recommend we go through those because those are helpful videos in really understanding the contents of this. So I plan on going through them. But for the purposes of this video, I think we're good. And so I'm marking that one complete and we'll move on to the next lesson. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.